So you want to learn how to time splits in finish lengths for your distance races on the track. There's a very easy way to do it. We'll show you how to get your lap time device set up using the camera in the software. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to time a distance race and also a relay event and how that works in the software. I'll sh show you some of the tips and tricks that I know along with some of the tools that you can use in order to make life a little bit easier so you get faster and more proficient at doing those splits. So let's go. So we have finish links open. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a lap time device set up. Now you don't need the lap time plugin to do this. You can do splits off just the camera and the camera alone. So we'll go to lap time and options. So you can see here that my only device that I have available to me is from image. And so I've gone ahead and named it lap time. You can see the various settings that are here. This is how you would need to configure your device. Now, if you've never set up a device before, once you create it, it's going to show status as not loaded. You would need to hit OK, close finish links and go back in and then you will see its status there as running. I'm going to delete that because I don't need it here. The big thing here is your results need to be set to by lane. You can see you have quite a few options here. If you are going to use hip numbers, which I would suggest, not ID or bib numbers, you want to choose lane. And again, you would hit OK. Again, first time setting this up, close out of links, give it a moment, and then come back in. And that's how you would set up and configure your options there. Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up a race from the other day. This is going to be the girls 800. And you can see here I have quite a few ladies. Now, I've already recorded the splits on this. I've deleted those splits. I'll show you how to do that. But you can see here that my laps are set to two. This is how I have my layout set up where I have place, lane, name, affiliation, time, delta time, cumulative split, and their last split. Up here at the top is where I would set my number of laps. In this case, is the 800. This is two. Once you go into and load the race for the first time, that's going to be blank. When you do that, your laps will be set to zero. You do need to set that, otherwise you're not going to get split. So we'll go ahead and set it back to two. And again, you type in the, double click in the field, type the number and hit enter. And again, you see those numbers pop up there. So the gun goes off, we got to start. Athletes are coming around on their first lap. You can see here I have identical links down in the lower right corner of my screen. And how I have it set up is as I have time tracking turned on, all of these movements in here in the main window will sync up my identical links. Likewise, if I click on my identical links, it will take me to that moment in time in the finish links image. So having that time tracking turned on is a big deal and that will help you. The other thing that I have turned on is under image and options. And then my show lines is magenta, my hash color is red, but my splits are black. And you'll see what those look like here in just a second. There are gonna be some dashed black lines that indicate to me that I have read these athletes. I do always suggest your hash color be a little bit different color than your show lines. And this is, will be when you read the images as, as their final time. Don't use white, don't use black uh, a whole lot on uh, show lines because things kind of can get uh, real muddy, especially if you're in a poor lighting condition or you're in a highlight condition, having a white line on a white finish line uh, does prove to be difficult to read sometimes. Here's that time tracking I was talking about that's also on this tab. Have that set to all cameras and then everything will sync up as you click through the image. All right, so here's my first athlete coming through. That's number five. So I'm going to type in my number five and then shift enter. And you can see that the times populate here, but my final time did not. And that is what we are looking for. Now I have a gaming mouse set up and I'll show you that in a little bit. 
I have a button mapped to shift enter on that mouse. And so when I hit two, it now hits there. And I have another device called a stream deck. And as you can see, I have that set up over here. And I'll show you that a little bit more in a minute with some other cool devices. But I'm going to go ahead and set that to finish links. I have a profile there and I have some buttons set so I can hit a button for seven and that split time populates there. A couple different ways to do it. Again, you're trying to get this as close as possible. It's a split. It doesn't have to be completely accurate, but you want to be pretty close. And again, this is a prime example. As you can see here, this young lady has her hip number, not on her hip, hip but on her quad, as evident in the Identalinks picture. And that makes reading these a little bit more challenging. And especially if they don't have their hip number low enough. And here's my last runner. Yeah, number four, I'm sorry, I had one more left. Okay, so everyone's through on their lead lap. So here's our first finisher. Now I'm going to go ahead and read them as a finisher. And again, place is set to one. Her time is there, and now her laps are zero. Now these, I do want to make sure that I line up properly because this is their final time. And here's our final athlete. And again, everyone is, their laps are set to zero. You can see that my hash is red. My finish position lines are magenta. And my split lines are black. Now, if you happen to be red, green, colorblind, or you have any um, vision sensitivity in terms of colors, like I said before, you can go ahead and set those to whatever you want to be. I just would stay away from white and black. But you more than likely want to turn those on. Don't turn those to off um, because then you're going to have a hard time figuring out who's finished and who's not. Have you read this person? Have you not read that person? So that takes care of a running event. Now in this case, I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go and open the boys 4x4. And again, here we have our relay set up. And we have a picture. Now, this is really the second exchange. In the 4x4, Leg one and two is actually a combined split. We cannot take an accurate split for the leadoff leg to the second runner because that leadoff leg runs in lanes the whole way and because of the stagger. It's a three-turn stagger, not a two-turn stagger. If it was a two-turn stagger, we could. Um, but this, at this point in time, high school is a three-turn stagger. The split would not be accurate. So you're going to set your number of laps to three. And in this case, this number five that has the baton right now, he is the third runner. So I'm going to go ahead and on, on relay splits and the splits only, I read off the middle of the baton. So this is five, this is four. And now this is my anchor runner here. So here's five. And here's four. And then here's the finish. 
So we lined it up again on their torso. Five laps go to zero and four. Laps are zero and we have the splits. Now, one thing to show you is how to edit a split if you were to make a mistake. So let's say I went and I entered four twice. So now I have 44 when I put that in and I hit OK, results not in start list. Well, I have a, a time here, finish time. Well, in order to delete that, you highlight that record and click this icon here, which is going to delete the current result. That's all well and good. But what if I did 44 and shift enter? what happens there or three and shift enter in this case how do i delete that split i could delete that like this but if i screwed up the splits in any way i can go ahead and click on the one that i want to edit and click lap time edit split times now you're going to see a lot of values here that are grayed out and that's because i've used this file a few times trying to make this video and I've probably screwed something up at some point in my dialogue and you're going to see all these extra values here but the times are all the same it's 1 minute 50.11 245.20 in this case maybe I was a little off on the read um, compared to this last one you would simply highlight that one and click delete if that's what you want to do I can go back and then say, oh, wait, I, I didn't want to delete that one. You'd highlight the one you want and click undelete. This is definitely helpful um, in, in reviewing the data. And if you need to fix something, this, this is where you would do it by deleting or undeleting um, splits. And then once you do that, you hit OK. Don't hit accept because that's going to insert, potentially insert one there. Um, once you've made your changes and everything's good, go ahead and hit OK. And then you'd go ahead and save it. And assuming your meat management program is pulling that data um, and displaying it, your splits will pop out there. So how do we configure our gaming mouse? How do we configure a stream deck? What do those things look like and how do they work? I'm going to show you that here in just a second. So here I have a Stream Deck XL set up and I have various buttons mapped such as capture, initialize scoreboard, refresh, hold results, display results, get a manual wind reading, rearm, um, and one through nine and, and zero. The other thing that I have set up is splits. And so if you look on this screen, if I hit this button right here, that says splits, it takes me into the splits menu. And so then in finish links, as I go back through, I can go ahead and hit five and it'll put five, shift, enter, four, five, four, and then here's my finish and that's where I'd go back to my keyboard, five, and enter and four enter so it's a really really cool way of doing things the other thing that I have set up here is I even have various high-tech menus set up and I have the JD option I also have some things here, different programs I use. I have finish links, I have high tech, I have result TV, various websites I may go to. This is a fun little piece that I have there. And then I have some functionality in Lightroom, which is another program I use. But again, this is a lot of custom customization that you can do. It's not a cheap device but it's a really, really cool device. It does make life easier. So if you know keyboard shortcuts, um, you can map those shortcuts to a push of a button. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do. Um, I can't speak high enough of the Stream Deck. 
Again, this is the XL version, a lot more buttons. Um, they have a version that has six buttons. Um, then there's next step up. I'm not familiar with how many that has, but the XL has quite a few. So the more the merrier in this case. The other thing that I have set up off on my other screen is my gaming device, my gaming mouse. So I'll open that software and show you that. So with this mouse, and I have two different mice that I've used. Um, this is my desktop version I've used for quite a few, quite a number of years. I also have another one that I take with me when I travel, um, but I can map the mice, various buttons to do different things. So in this case, I have this front button here that'll do shift enter. Again, something quick and dirty, but makes life a lot easier. Stream Deck is, is great, but it is, it is bigger, definitely bigger. And that's how you can go ahead and set up your splits.